Hey guys, Matt here, Right Brewery. We have a beer to try. And, uh, well, the foam has already died down from the pour. But first, we're gonna get into some brewing footage that I took uh, brewing this last month. So let's go check that out, and then we'll get into this. See you in a minute. All right, it's a brew day. Just put the salts right on top of the grains there. We're underletting, apparently. About four gallons of mash water. It's coming over from the HLT. And uh, 158 degree water is getting added. It should bring us to about 150, which is where I want to mash in. There we go, the water's starting to come up there. And then we'll give it a stir here shortly. All right. Got it all in there, give it a good stir here. Make sure we got everything mixed up good, salts, everything. And there we go, 150. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run some water in here and top up. Top this up just a little bit to kind of equalize that temperature. Get bring this back to 150. We're good to go. And I call that a win. All right, so I decided to make a last minute adjustment on the hops. I was going to do a uh, holler towel blanc, which I'm still probably going to use that because I got a little bit left of it and I just want to get rid of the bag, the open bag that I got. But instead of doing the tenang, um, this has come out of one of the hot boxes. I think I'm going to use this Azaka because uh, I'm trying to make a mango kolsch. And this one says it's a uh, big bowl of fruit, mango, papaya, pineapple, and citrus. And it just so happens uh, that it came out of one of the hot boxes. So I got this nice two ounce can from 2022. So I think we're going to go with that. All right, we are at our boil point. We're going to do. I think I want to do 75 minutes because there is a lot of pills in here. I don't find that I need to do a full 90 minutes. But I will do a little more, so I'll do 75 just because there's so much pills in this. And uh, just waiting for that to cycle through. There we go. So taking this opportunity to measure out my hops. There's a last minute uh, change. This is some hops I had left over from my previous brew from Beer and Wine Hobby. So these hops came from Beer and Wine Hobby. And then I have our Yakima Valley hops, Zaka. I'm gonna end up using this whole can. Uh, I'm gonna do, I think it was a quarter ounce, yeah, quarter ounce of a Zaka at uh, Bittering. And then the rest of this I'm gonna put into hop stand. I really like doing hop stands. I got a lot of good flavor out of these hops doing that. So let's go ahead and measure these out. Yeah, while I was, uh, Measuring out the hops, it's getting angry. Got a nice hop break happening here. Love it. Got it all measured out. This is gonna be bittering. This is late edition. Using up the holler towel. And then the rest of this. Going in the hop stand. 60 minutes. Here goes the bittering charge. Quarter ounce of Azaka. It's a dual purpose hop, so we're using for both the bittering and the aroma. All right, 15 minutes left. We're gonna throw in our World Flock tablet and yeast nutrient. All right, flame out hops. We're gonna do that holler towel blanc. Got an ounce put in there. All right, we're down to 175. So we're gonna go ahead and do the hop stand. There's the Zaka. This is the one and three quarters ounce, the whatever's left in the can. I'm gonna put that in here. Boom. Now 
we'll set this timer to 15 minutes. This is where a system like this is very nice. You got some electronic control you can keep. You can keep it at 175 for that 15 minute hop stand. That is very cool. And uh, we're just getting ready here. I got the got the fermenter soaking in some star sand. We're getting ready to receive. Our yeast of choice today is going to be Imperial Yeast GO3 Dieter. Now they're saying that this one is designed for like a nice crisp clean beer Kolsch styles. So I thought that would be a good thing to try on this beer. Planning on making a mango Kolsch with this. We'll see how it turns out. All right, there we go, five gallons of beer. Let's go ahead and put in our sanitized tilt. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in our yeast of choice today, which is the Dieter GO3 from uh, Imperial, sponsor of Vertubers. Uh, I don't have the tripod set up right now, so give me a second to open this. All right, here we go. Been all nice and shaken. Got all the goodies out of there. Now it's time to seal this guy up. And then we'll uh, put on the airlock. Here we go. So it says 60 to 69 degrees is the usage suggestion. And uh, we're at about a 1050 beer, so pretty good on the pitch rate. So this came in about 62 degrees, I believe. And uh, right now the temperature's kind of just sort of settling. I have it set to 66. That's kind of on the upper end of the middle part. I think that's all right. Got the heat belt on there because it is, you know, like 50 in the garage. So uh, don't think the refrigerator will be on much right now. So, all right, let's see what happens. See how long it takes for us to get some activity. All right, this is the next morning. It hasn't quite been 24 hours yet. Probably been about 18. There you go. So Imperial, Imperial Yeast GO3 pouch. No starter. Sorry, y'all from running. Okay, so here we go. This is the Mango Kolsch. Um, and I don't remember all the exact uh, steps that I went through with the brewing. It's been uh, it's been well over a month now since I brewed this, but as you can see, very very clear beer. I'll bring it closer to the camera so you guys can get a a really good look at that. There you go. Look at that. You can see right through it, right over to the kettles. <laughs> so definitely has amazing clarity to it. Um, didn't do anything special with this, just fermented it out. Um, you know, let it kind of condition for a while, put the fruit on there. And then uh, this is just, you know, sitting in the keg for a few weeks. Just made it real, real nice and clear. So uh, we'll get into this here and tell you some about some a little bit about it, but let's see what we have with the aroma. Yeah, it's got a very clean aroma to it. You can definitely pick up some of the mango in there because I put a lot of mango fruit into this. So I'm definitely getting some of that in the nose. I was real light with the um, uh, the bittering hops, but the most of the hops that I put in this were late edition, and um, I put in azaka. You know, so that with uh, azaka, it's mango, tropical fruit, and citrus, and definitely getting a fair amount of that in the nose. It's not super strong though. It's still got a nice sort of crisp, uh, clean. Um, almost uh, lager-like uh, aroma to it, but definitely picking up a good uh, amount 
of the mango and the tropical fruits right there in the nose, which is wonderful. Well, let's go ahead and for a taste. Cheers. Hmm. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've been drinking on this for the last couple of weeks. So I just couldn't wait anymore. Um, and it's been delicious. I've been you know, drinking on it at night. I've been having it with dinner. It's a really nice, um, crisp, clean, very refreshing, uh, very light kind of beer. Uh, it's not light in the ABV, but it's very light in the taste. Uh, what did it come out to? Five and a half percent ABV. But yeah, you get a real good uh, Kolsch characteristic, and that's probably a lot has to do with the um, the uh, yeast that I used in this. The yeast that went into this one is the Imperial G03 Dieter. So uh, shout out to Imperial Yeast is one of our sponsors for the Brewtubers. And never used this yeast before, but it's nice. A very clean yeast, as you can see. Um, actually, when it went into the fermenter, it wasn't very, um, um, you know, I had, I'd go through my process of the whirlpooling and everything and kind of keep a lot of the sediment behind. It was already pretty well off when it started and when fermentation was done and I transferred it to the keg, it was already looking pretty clear, so it didn't really take much more cold conditioning to get it uh, to finish out. Um, let's see here. So as far as the uh, grain bill, it was mostly Pilsner. And then I added in some Carafoam to help with the head retention, even though it really didn't do much. I mean, it got a bit of a ring here, but uh, head retention to speak of there, it just you know, dies off after a couple of minutes. Um, this was gone. You know, from the time that I poured it, came out here, set up the camera, set up my table and everything. So, I don't know, five minutes, it was already pretty much gone. So it doesn't, it definitely doesn't stick around. Um, there is Vienna in this. There's uh, Gold Pills Vienna. The only reason I, I mixed those two is I had a little bit of Gold Pills Vienna, Vienna left. So I figured, put it in there, finish it off. And then I topped up the rest of the Vienna that I wanted to add to this. Um, and of course, the miscigilated malt to kind of help bring the pre-H into line. Um, water profile, very light, didn't do a whole lot with the brewing salts. Um, I think I put in a gram, yeah, gram each of gypsum, calcium chloride, and epsom. And that brought my water profile real low. Everything was in the 20s, pretty much. Um, you know, 22 chloride, 20 calcium. Um, magnesium and, salt and, and um, sodium, pretty much my water profile, 4 and 13. It's pretty low here. Um, and the SF4 was 39, so a little bit more in that. Uh, to help out with, with the, uh, just to give it a little bit of something you know, in the water so it wasn't completely uh, blank. So you mash it at 150 degrees, fermented, uh, just room temperature. And uh, when the fermentation was just about finished, it was right at the end, I went ahead and added in three pounds of mango, uh, fresh mango to this. And I left it sit on there for two weeks before uh, transferring it. And that came out good. I gave it a good, a good mango flavor, a good presence. It's not overpowering at all. It's just a nice um, um, combination, I guess, is probably the good way of putting it. With the Kolsch, makes it um, just gives it a little bit of something, a little bit of extra flavor there. But um, yeah, it came out real good. So it's a yeah, OG ten forty eight final gravity ten oh seven. Um, yeah, and then it's a hops. So for hops, it was uh, all Yakima Valley hops. Um, I believe I used my cans that I had, some of the cans from the hop boxes. So Azaka went into this just a little bit, quarter of an ounce for uh, the bittering charge at 60 minutes. Everything else was late. I put an ounce of Holocaust Blanc at flame out, and the rest of that two ounce cans, it was one and three quarter ounces of Azaka and Whirlpool for 15 minutes. Um, and that's at my standard 175. I, it's 170, 175 is kind of what I aim for for a Whirlpool. And I get pretty good uh, results out of that. Um, excuse me. It's got good carbonation, even though you can't really see it. Um, it's not, I didn't super carbonate it. I think in the keg it's set to uh, 11 PSI, I believe. Uh, and I serve it at that. So yeah, it's just a shame that the head retention didn't, didn't really stick around uh, with this beer, but who cares, right? It tastes great. It's, it, it looks the part and everything else. So it's, it's wonderful. So that's all I have for this video. 
Um, looking to put together another one, another uh, grain, grain to glass here pretty soon because I also brewed up a citric paleo. That's now done and have been conditioning for a little while, so I'm going to put something together for that. So look forward to that, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Cheers.